Good morning, everyone. Um, I wanted to do this video uh, speaking about the saying in the Gospel of Thomas um, where the Lord says, and bear with me while I read these things to you from my other phone. Um, Jesus said in the Gospel of Thomas, Have you found the beginning then that you are looking for the end? You see the end will be where the beginning is. Congratulations to the one who stands at the beginning. That one will know the end and will not taste death. Now think about that for a second. He said that that person won't taste death. Now let's read, and that was from the Gospel of Thomas, which is not a canonical book, not a measuring cane book. Now also think about the fact that um, I'm going to reiterate some of the things I've taught on my channel before as well. Think about the fact that the Lord said, to the devil when he was tempted in the desert the devil said to the lord take these stones these two stones and turn them into bread and jesus said man does not live on bread alone but by every word that cometh from the mouth of god so what why would the lord say that and why would the devil say what he said because the devil was using keys and the lord was using keys back to him and the keys of the kingdom are what the scribes and the pharisees hid <clears throat> and they blocked themselves from entering the kingdom and blocked other people from getting into the kingdom as well. And so um, I've been reading First and Second Samuel, <clears throat> and in reading First and Second Samuel, um, you realize that Saul, King Saul, was told by Samuel to go and kill a certain king and kill everything in the land, the women, the children, the sucklings, that which are babies which why would god tell why would god tell him to kill all the babies why would he tell him to do that when one of the ten commandments is thou shalt not kill which is translated more to like thou shalt not murder but if you're killing babies and children and things like that because you're conquering a land some would equate that to murder especially people that are against the christian theology so what what is he talking about the reason people mistake that verse or those types of verses is because of what it says in the Gospel of Thomas. <clears throat> they don't understand the end because they don't understand the beginning. In order to understand the beginning, you must first understand who you are. And to understand who you are, you need to understand what happened in the beginning of the world. And that is that as early as Genesis 6, the sons of God, which are angels were they which is not in the bible the part where it says that part is but the part where it says <clears throat> why they were allowed to do this these angels said to god look mankind the man the, the men and women and people that you made are doing evil things on the earth and jesus said to them the word of the lord said to them they are made out of four elements you are made out of two if you went, you would sin much more than they are sinning. And they said, no, we won't. And he said, okay, fine, go ahead. Made them flesh and they came down and they mated with human women, all that they chose. And they taught them all sorts of horrible, disgusting atrocities against the nature of this world. And they were immediately judged for those things that they did. And their children were given a certain sentence as well, which is not a good sentence. And many people have said this before, but you notice that there weren't so many, like it, it's almost like there was no demon possession until the giants all died because they would be roaming evil spirits around this world, causing havoc in the invisible realm. That was their sentence. They would never like taste like food again. They would like feel like, you know, imagine that. Imagine like sort of like a vampire, right? They, which are real, they vampires and even um you know dr schnoblin who used to be a vampire said that when he was drinking blood and doing all those weird rituals and things like that who he's now a christian you know it's a very boring dry horrible life to be like that and so you need to think about the fact that in in um in first samuel and second samuel going back to that that they saul did not kill the king that he was supposed to Samuel had to go and kill that king and he cut him into like it says he like dismembered him basically 
And why would he do that? Why would he dismember a king? Like, what would be the purpose for that? Well, if you listen to the story of the giant of Kandahar, which the military killed in the deserts of Iraq or Afghanistan or whatever, they had to shoot it in the face because it wasn't dying from body shots. Something about the Nephilim or the giants or the progeny of the fallen angels with human women, something about them, they have a hard time to be killed. Like it's very difficult to kill them. So if you read first Samuel, I believe you find out that Saul disobeyed God. And then he begs Samuel, please give me another chance. Please give me another chance. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. And then after that is when he like got jealous of David and all that stuff. And, but you notice that David cut Goliath's head off. You notice that? He cut his head off. The, the, the giant of Kandahar, it wasn't dying until they shot it in the face. There's something about that. You notice on zombie movies, they cut their heads off or they damage the brain somehow. There's some. It's been said many times that giants have regener, regenerative powers. Their DNA allows them to regenerate. They must have something in their DNA that allows them to regenerate somehow. And up until like the not like, you know, right when we started the digital age where there wasn't newspapers anymore back in the day, as they were building roads all across this country, there was people finding giant bones everywhere. Even the conquistadors, like all the way back in history, people were finding giant bones. Why? It wasn't just they weren't giant humans. They had different shaped skulls. They had more teeth. They had more fingers. That isn't, isn't normal, right? So people that don't understand this, they don't understand why God would kill babies and women and children and things like that. It's because they were from the line of the fallen angels. And those fallen angels mated with human beings. But you need to understand that the human beings that they had children with, many or most, were from the line of Cain. And Cain, according to Jude, I think Jude 1.14, 4, because there's only one chapter of Jude, and Jude was the the stepbrother of Jesus Christ. He was Joseph's son from before when he had a wife that after before she died they had children and Joseph was an old man when he when he took Mary as his um like sort of like just to take care of her. It wasn't like a relationship like normal. So he had a son and it, that was who Jude was. And Jude is only one chapter, but in Jude, there are some powerful things said in that book because you can combine Jude with second Peter and it forms a whole nother fluent text where it gives like a third dimension to everything that you, that I'm talking about right now. So the Lord said in Thomas, have you understood the end that you're, or the beginning that you're looking for the end? So like you can't even figure out the end of the Bible if you don't understand the beginning of the Bible and the beginning there was a lot of bad things happening between the heavenly realm and the human realm. And so Cain, if Cain is included in Adam's lineage, which would then go to Christ's lineage, you would find out that it doesn't make sense in Jude where he says Enoch seventh from Adam, because if Enoch was seventh from Adam, that would make no sense because Cain would supposed to be in that lineage would push Enoch to be eighth in line. So that's not possible. So if that's not possible, where did Cain come from? He came from the fact that Eve desired the angel, which the angel was Samael. She had sex with Satan and then she repeated that same act with Adam and she got pregnant with Abel. Then Abel was killed by Cain. Abel was killed by Cain because... Cain was from the devil's line, lineage. So it says in the Bible, he was a murderer from the beginning. And so it doesn't tell you this in the regular canon, but in the super gospel, which is a combination of all these different gospels that were removed from the Bible, you find out that when Joseph came back and found Mary pregnant, he thought that what had happened to Adam had also happened to him. Because Adam was away praying when that happened between Satan and Eve. That's why the Apple symbol is is a mockery. The Apple computer symbol is a mockery. And so when you put two together, it forms a gray alien face. Is because the gray aliens are this verse. And no wonder for um, the devil or uh, something like... 
transforms himself into an angel of light. That verse that talks about the fact that the devil transforms himself into an angel of light, that is from the first book of Adam and Eve, or one of the books of Adam and Eve. I believe it's also in the Cave of Treasures. But regardless of the fact, people don't read the origin story of where we come from. They don't even count it as canon. They don't even count it as scripture. And I have done a video of an actual like preacher with a very small church, a man that I respect, that does not count it as scripture. Even says it at the pulpit, he doesn't count it as scripture. But he talks about Batman cartoons or Batman shows and on the pulpit. That's okay. But it's not okay to talk about the fact that scripturally, Paul was referring to the book of Adam and Eve when he says, no wonder for the devil transforms into an angel of light. He's quoting that book. So why would he quote that book, but it's not scripture? It doesn't even make any sense. So anyways... People don't realize that in the origin of who we are, Jesus, the Word of God, came and helped them many, many, many times. He even said to them the 5,500-year prophecy where he said, I'll come and save you in that amount of time. Then he fulfills the 5,500-year prophecy, and people still don't talk about the fact that he went down to the underworld, and he took the saints and everybody that was down there out because the wages of sin is death. The wages of sin is death. Revelation 1.18 I am the one who has the keys of hell and death. Where did he get the keys of hell and death? He got them from death and from Satan. They are entities that were controlling the souls of humanity. What are the souls of humanity? The souls of humanity are the souls that in the heavenly war between the good and the bad, the ones that went with Lucifer, the third of the angels, and the third that stayed with God, we are the ones, the people that are on this earth are the people that did not fight in the heavenly war. What does he say? Because you are lukewarm, I will spew you out of my mouth. What is this world? What do they do in cartoons? They put a good angel and a bad angel on your shoulder. That's because that's true. It's really happening. There is a good angel that every day goes and tells the Lord God what you've done for the day. And there's also demons tempting you to do things according to lust, envy, malice, hate, Everyone that is listening to this has felt those things before, and you fight it, and you fight it, and you fight it. What does it say? Run the, run the race. Like, fight the good fight. What are you fighting? You're fighting the heavenly war. This life is your war that you didn't fight when they fought their war. See, he's a righteous judge, and this whole earth is a courtroom, and you, right now, are to decide. Are you going to align yourself with Satan or God? That's it. That's all there is to it. And once you realize this, you will rule over the all. The all is this false system that has been set up by the archons, which are the fallen angels, which are the gray alien looking creatures that make that apple symbol that's on the back of the tablets. They form all these things so that you don't notice and it's all like this cookie cutter thing. I mean, even Santa is Satan just with the letters mixed up. Why would you want some creepy fat guy to jump down your chimney? That's creepy in my opinion. Why, why is it that Jeremiah spoke against cutting down trees and putting up silver and tinsel on, on the tree. It's a, it's Christmas. That's what it's talking about. Because back in the day, they used to use that as worshiping Nimrod. And they would basically, they would basically take the like testicles of sacrificed animals and they would dip them in silver and gold and stuff like that and put them on the tree. It's disgusting. So now we use you know, fake stuff from China and put it on a tree. It, just, it doesn't matter. It's symbolic. See what I'm saying? It's symbolic. So anyways, going back to reading this, um, John 21, 21 and onward. Um, bear with me for a moment. So it's kind of funny, you know, the, there are three that that make up the trinity and seven is also a holy number so seven is a holy number and three is a holy number and this starts off at john 21 21 so seven times three and seven times three just interesting i know numbers weren't originally in the the bible but when they were you know codexing it but king uh king james version peter seeing him hath uh peter seeing him said saith to jesus lord and what shall this man do Hold on, I gotta let this load. Bear with me. 
21, 22. Jesus saith unto him, If I will that he tarry till I come, what is that to thee? Follow thou me. Then went this saying abroad among the brethren, that the disciple should not die. Yet Jesus said not unto him, He shall not die. But if I will that he tarry till I come, what is that to thee? See, it got spread around all the disciples that he had said to John that he's not going to die. But John was on Patmos and he did die. What he's talking about is that John represents the elect of God that will come at the end that will understand this teaching that I am telling you right now. That there was something devastating that happened at the beginning of mankind that people do not understand right now. One of those people being Peter. Peter does not understand that Peter represents the church. And I recently had a discussion with one of my coworkers during an inventory um, thing that we did for a full day at work and he's a Catholic and I explained all of these things to him and he was amazed he was astounded at what I was saying he could not believe what I was telling him and it all made sense to him and that is what the power of the third testament the books that have been removed from the Bible has the power to make the two stones become bread see Jesus even said that who who like uh, you know talks about giving your child a stone like uh, uh, a child asked for bread who will give him a stone see what it's talking about that's what it's talking about if, if a child which were the children if if you ask jesus for bread which is the word of god if you ask him for an edible bread you know would would he give you a stone no he'll give you something that you can understand which is putting these things into the two stones so they become life matthew 13 33 the woman took three lumps of uh, lumps of meal or something like that and puts them into the bread and then it rises on the third day. And I'm pro paraphrasing, so excuse me if that's not exactly correct. But um, see what I'm saying? So that's why in Thomas he says, do you understand the beginning that you're asking about the end? It's impossible to do so. You cannot go further into the Bible and its understandings unless you understand where we came from. We are are the sons of God, but we will die like one of the princes. See what I'm saying? So that is what I'm talking about. So God bless you guys all. I hope that you understood this teaching. If you have any questions, please post them in the comments and God bless and have a great day. Take care.